Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Jason here, and this is The Invincible, a brand new game just came out on November 6th. It is, if you, if I had to, 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 uh, categorize it, it is a narrative-driven, very, uh, story-focused game. If you played, like, Firewatch or anything like that, or Fort Solace, we just did that one, very similar to that. It looks amazing. I've played the demo. I played the two demos they put out, and I can't wait to jump into it. So hopefully you guys are in for an experience and you're interested in hitting that like button. That way everyone can uh, find it because YouTube loves to share videos that get a lot of likes. So let's jump into The Invincible. The Dragonfly, a small research unit of the Interplanetary Commonwealth with a crew of six, travels the distant regions of space. After visiting many worlds and exploring numerous planets, the research mission comes to an end. However, on the way home, there is one more task waiting for the crew. Despite the risk, Astrogator Novik undertakes the extraction of a rare and extremely valuable mineral himself. Novik gets the mineral, but at the cost of a broken leg and immense pain. The Astrogator's accident doesn't stop the crew from happily celebrating the end of the research cycle. It was a time of creating deep bonds and feeling unstoppable. Victorious, they set course home and go for a well-deserved rest in the hibernation chambers. So that's how we start this game. We are in hibernation. Where am I? Oh my heck. Marit? Anybody? So yeah, this is obviously not hibernation. This is not cryo sleep. What is this? We are on the planet. Hello? Is anyone there? Uh, Cobble? Marit? Uh, hey, this is Yasna. Uh, I was just with you. And now, I don't know where I am. Or how I got here. I've got a splitting headache. Does anyone hear me? Base, do you copy? Are you there? Nobody hears me. What is going on here? It's probably nothing serious. No damage to the suit or bone structure. Just <clears throat> this headache. Contact your crew. I don't see anybody. Okay, we're gonna check our backpack. Oh yeah, that wire looks uh not good. Oh, I can't hear you anymore. My receiver worked for a moment, but now there's only silence. Several hours of oxygen. Okay, great. That's not good. There aren't many supplies, which would suggest a quick recce. Or was it just the end of the mission? Just like I thought. Nothing. Beacon can't be detected either. Oh, let's 
legacy of the past me hasn't failed the present me. And let's hope she took notes. Are we in Regis 3? Doesn't ring any bells. And my crew have no way to tell me. So I report that I have no recollection of this planet. The last thing I remember. Hang on. We've closed the research cycle. We, we were already in hibernation. Flying back. Is my blackout a side effect of metabolic depression? That would be bizarre. For some reason, our crew split into two groups. The first one set up camp. I wonder if I was with them. Or am I on my way there? Both groups landed in the same place. We took two landers to the surface. I don't usually do this. Maybe the first one broke. The first group explored the ocean with no biologist. It's weird. And the other one, just me, took a different route. Leading to... Right! I was heading straight to the camp. You must be somewhere near. Just wait here. I just need to get a sense of my surroundings. Landmarks. Well done, past me. <laughs> you didn't disappoint after all. Oh, I sound like... I need to stop doing this. Okay, find your exact location by looking for landmarks. Okay. Hopefully, it's not... Oh, God. All right. Dog, needle, croco. Croco? Do that. Hey, crocodile. Crocodile. This is so cool. It's like, it's a retro futuristic game. So, if you've not read, there is actually a book that came out in the 60s. A Polish writer wrote a sci-fi book called The Invincible. And this game is set just uh, in that universe. Not one-to-one. -one. It's not an exact copy. But it is basically there. It follows the same beats. Got a rope we're gonna get out of here? I think it's mine. I'll try to retrieve it later. It might come in handy. Might come in handy, okay. That doesn't resemble any reptile I know. I oh, can't tell what that is. Doesn't resemble any reptile. Huh. Another object. Still not a match. Oh. Is this teeth? Is this a reptile? That has an interesting shape. Of a crocodile indeed. Okay, so we have teeth for a crocodile. We have the first one. I need one more. An object I called Needle. Okay, so we've done the crocodile. You know what? We found the rope over there. Crocodile, I'm assuming Needle. Dog. Right. It resembles the eye of a needle. Eye of a needle, okay. I report that I have established my position. Time to hit the road. Time to hit the road. Find a way to the camp. So yeah, we have a few hours of oxygen in our backpack. There's that. And so... Oh, we can sprint. That is not a good sprint. Oh god, what is this? Okay. Yeah, so it is a uh, what you would traditionally call a walking simulator. I I enjoy them when they're done well. So like Fort Solus was kind of the same way. There's no like uh, enemies or anything. We're not like shooting enemies and taking cover and doing all that kind of stuff. We're literally just investigating and trying to figure out what the heck happened. And uh, the demos that I've played... Well, 
Okay, right here. Device. More dropped equipment. I must have hit the ground pretty hard. Yeah, you drop all the way over here. Detector. Dr. Gorski, you won't be pleased. More equipment to repair. The detector's dead. Guess I shouldn't just leave it like this. Broken okay. or not. Broken equipment, great. But yeah, so you can investigate, and from the demos I've played, I've played two of them so far. This is a really, really, uh, well-done voice acting, well-done story. I will say I have read the book, so I might have an idea of what we're gonna run into. I'm in a canyon, which doesn't make it easy to navigate. Oh, I hope the data's trustworthy and you're close by. But it doesn't seem like it, like the, um, the names I'm running into are not familiar. But yeah, so it, it, I don't think it's a one-to-one, -one, you know, comparison, like, perfect copy of the book. So even if you've read the book, you might know some idea of what's going to happen, but it's not one-to-one. -one. Am I going to climb up this? Oh, yeah, okay. The gigantic spike going to hit me. Puncture my suit and kill me. We gotta get out. So you do have a, a notebook that you can open up your map and you can zoom in and stuff like that so you can kind of zoom in. And I, I like that everything is like hand-drawn and all the all the equipment you get is like from the 1950s and 60s like what they thought the uh, future was gonna be like. I love that. My radar is literally a, uh, a sound motion detector. <laughs> it's so cool. It's not not an LED screen like from Aliens. Where there was like the motion detector thing? Nope. It's literally just this uh, red sound thing. Oh, I have something on the tracker. What the? I assume it's no one from the crew, so perhaps it's my beacon. Uh, yeah, this woman is. <laughs> See, my first, my brain first goes to, oh, that's a that's a monster or an alien or something. <laughs> she, you know, she's more realistic. Like, oh, there's nothing. We know there's nothing here, so. It has to be like my tracker or maybe part of my crew. Where's where's that? So she knows, oh don't don't freak out. Me, Jason, being the crazy person who plays video games, I'm like the first thing I think is, oh, there's a monster over there, that's why I have motion tracking. Great. <laughs> I'm gonna get killed by a monster. Huh. There's water on this desert planet. Uh yeah, not water, it's unknown liquid. Uh oh. Another liquid that did not allow the biosynosis to fall. Won't be easy to replenish drinking supplies. Not without tests. Filtration. Yeah. As we all remember, third rule. Oh, Jesus. Alright, that's a <laughs> literal flashback. <laughs> like, it literally flashes. Okay. I was about to. Already awake. Good. My body might be awake, but my brain is still in the fridge. I wouldn't be so sure, my dear. Clearly your sense of humor was first awake. Now, try to get up, slowly. Dr. Gorski doesn't look so well. How are you holding up, Gorski? Don't get up just yet. Is it really so hard for you to remember a couple of simple rules? I have to stretch my legs. They're numb. Hibernation will do that. Just sit for a while. <sighs> Alright, so we're in cryo sleep. Hibernation sleep, I guess. Here, take it and remember the third rule. Yes, I know. Stay hydrated. In small sips. Always the first one to get up. I don't know how you do it, Murray. It's a matter of habit. After so many cycles of cryogenic sleep, one either gets used to it or becomes a tortoise. <sighs> Kovel, will you help me here? Sure, I'm coming. This is not our system. Has anyone noticed we're in the wrong place? Kovel, it's not a good time. Yes, now look for yourself. This is not the right planet. 
Uh oh. You shouldn't be walking yet. We're in the wrong planet? Uh oh. Koval, could you stop it? I'm telling you, we woke up in the wrong place. Yes, we heard you. Enough of this, Yasna. Take a drink. Crow, astrogator. Debating chamber in 15 minutes. This can't be good. Guess we'll find out. But first, here, hold on to it and remember. Great, yeah. Got a memory there. So yeah, in this universe, the astrogator is like the captain of a ship. A spaceship. So that's why they keep calling him the Astrogator. He's the lead person. Okay, we gotta pull out this. Let's go over here. Warm. Oh, getting warmer. The big shiny thing. Got you. I found it. Look for me on your trackers. Okay, now it's just going to be right next to me. That looks like... Oh, what is this? Oh, I think I see our ship. You're not leaving without me, are you? Can't zoom in. So, I like the scope. You literally have a zoom and then a focus. Which is really awesome. So you can kind of uh, get an idea like, oh, I've zoomed in on here, but I need to focus on it, so I gotta fix my focus a little bit. Oh, there you go. See, I love that! It's actually like a real scope. So friggin' cool. Okay. Moving on. Yeah, I know. We found, we found our ship right up there. I found a way out of the valley. Leading more or less towards the camp. Journal updated. Here's my journal. Oh, I can't go this way. Oh. It's a cliff. I can't jump that. I mean... Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, there's no jump in that. Okay. So maybe we not... Yeah, I'm gonna go around. I'm assuming. And yeah, from the demos I remember, you have a run, but... She's out of breath real fast. Like, you know, oh, that's a, that's a pretty good run. Oh, there we go. All right. No time to lose. And, and then she does her arm movements, but yeah, yeah see, she's running, but like, I don't know, she's like doing that speed walk thing. <laughs> so, oh, uh, all right. Oh, uh, Krako. The game looks gorgeous, and I like how... They give you, you're in a suit, and so they literally have on the edges of the screen. Time to go. You can see your helmet. Like, your head would literally, like, in reality, that's what you would see. You would see the edges of your helmet. Constantly. So I just hopefully, you know, I have a visor on. Hopefully I don't break or anything like that so I can breathe. Keep breathing. All right, I know. No? Okay. <laughs> she's a nervous hummer, it seems. She needs to hum because she's freaking out. Hmm. If this area is volcanically active, ash outbursts and extreme temperature changes may explain the extinction of local fauna and flora. But it's all just... too... Idyllic. There's no dust in the air. The sky is clear, and the soil looks like laterite to me. Perhaps not highly fertile, but not entirely barren. On some planets, such storms last for several hundred days. I hope it's not one of them. Hundred days? Good lord. Look at that. That's crazy. Oh, it's getting dark. This game is gorgeous. 
And I am playing it on PC, so I do have the, the uh, settings maxed out. And this game is out on uh, PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series consoles. It's not out on the previous gen, so you cannot play it on an Xbox One or a PS4. You gotta have the new generation stuff. Or a PC. And the, the, the uh, requirements for PC are not too beefy, but you definitely need a more modern PC. You're not gonna be playing this on like a laptop from 2015 or anything like that. You're gonna need a pretty beefy uh, specs. I mean, to play it with higher settings. I'm sure you can probably get away with playing it on lower settings on PC. Get up here. Over 400 meters in a straight line. How do I get up there? I, I see you. Can you hear me? I just need to get down from here. Edge? Oh, is it, am I not going to be able to jump down here? The escarpment is about 10 meters high. It looks like I could slide down. I don't want to slide. Not in this suit. Oh, that's a big... Out of the frying pan. Into the fire. At least I can hook the rope here. Oh, yeah, I forgot we have the rope, right? What if we need it later on, though? Oh, God. So they give you a sliding option, and then a... Whoa, what is this? Oh, well. If it catches me, so be it. This oh. suit will hold. The suit will hold in a storm? Mm, I don't know about that. I wouldn't trust it too much. That one, the suit's like the only thing between you and the outside. Oh god, okay, let's do it, I guess. I like how they bring up an option, like you bring up... It's either conversation or whatever you want to say. They give you different options that you can choose from. Like right now, I can say, oh, I'll look for another way, or I'll take a chance. Or like in, like, discussions, when you're talking, you can actually pick your response, which is really cool. Uh, oh god, see, I don't want to use my rope, because I might need it later on, so... I'm one of those crazy people that, oh! I'm gonna keep everything till the end of the game. <laughs> Alright. I want to see you as soon as possible. I'll take a chance. Oh god, this is not gonna be good. I'm gonna rip my suit. <sighs> oh, shit, shit. oh god. Love you. Oh, that was less than ideal. Yeah. But I'm okay. The suit's fine too. Oh, is the storm kicking up? Great! Oh, it's gonna get bad. I mean, is there rocks? Can we get over here? Visibility could be better. Oh, it's gonna Maybe get- Maybe I should wait! No, you're in the middle of nothing. What are you gonna wait for? Can't see a dang thing. Did she pass out? I think she blacked out? Passed out? Oh Jesus, that's loud. What, what happened? Where Much closer to my destination. I must have walked for some time. But she doesn't remember? But I don't remember it. Oh, Jesus. Did, did I black out again? She is. That's not well. You start blacking out and forgetting stuff. That's not a good sign. 
I'm assuming. Yeah, we came from down there. Well, let's get to the camp before I black out again. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh. And hop her closer to the camp. Find a place to land. I need to get back to Dragonfly as soon as possible. Go to the infirmary and do a full set of tests on myself. Yeah, I'm losing it. So the camp is up here. And my, like, my visor is getting uh, dirty. Like, is there a wipe button? Can I wipe that away? No, it doesn't look like it. Dang it. There's no flashlight. Okay, great. It's gonna be dark pretty soon. This does not look treacherous at all. I like how they have prompts in the world. Like, they don't tell you where to go. Like, there's no big yellow line or something like that to follow. You just kind of, as you get close enough to an object, it kind of highlights it for you. And you see there's an up arrow, meaning I can climb that. Or if there's like a conversation button or uh, <coughs> bubble, you know you can make a choice or something. Oh god, am I gonna have to climb that? Oh, I have my rope! I could probably use my rope, right? And swing it up there? Or not? You're gonna climb- okay. You're not- okay. You're not gonna use the rope. All my legs are heavy. And Bill is not inviting. Legs become too heavy. Hands become too weary. Down you go. Okay, she did all that. That's scary. Oh, look at the celestial body. You. Regis third satellite. Regis three, oh, yeah, Regis three oh three, <laughs> third satellite. Okay, that is. Uh, I wish they would do that dimmer. Flashbacks don't need to blind me. Astrogator, sir, crew. Doctor Gorski, right on time. Any updates? We have a set of data from the near surface probe. How's the activity? Zero, zero, and two. So, less than nothing. Atmosphere? Nitrogen, 78%. Argon, 2%. Carbon dioxide, zero. Methane, 4%. The rest is oxygen. But wait, that's 16%. With oxygen concentration as such, there should be life. At least some microbes. And yet we have detected no traces. Yeah, we'll get to that later. Let's finish with the probe readings first. Air radioactivity? It's virtually zero. In the word of paradise, no radioactivity, no endospores, no bacteria, no mold, no viruses, nothing. Just the oxygen. If there were no living organisms on the continent, there shouldn't be this much of it. What if life develops on some other continents here? No, I doubt it. Insulation outside the equatorial zone is weak. You don't see how thick the polar ice caps were, Doctor. I can guarantee a minimum of five miles of ice sheet, potentially six. Mm, that's true. There's more chance of something in the ocean. Some seaweed, algae. But why didn't life migrate to the land? Could be because of hard radiation. Mm, I don't think so. According to the probe readings, the ground activity is exceptionally low for this part of the galaxy. I wonder if some special kind of drought-intolerant evolution occurred here. Mm, that would at least explain some of the abnormalities. Mm. Anyway. We'll have to take a look under the water. First, it would be good to know what time frame we're working with. Married, do you have the geological analyses? Well, it's a bit too early for mature conclusions, but this planet looks old to me. Such a fossilized egg must be at least six billion years old. Besides, the sun has seen better days too. It's almost a red dwarf. Any rare resources, forms, creatures? We can't expect such detailed data, sir. Not from this distance. Yes, we would have to explore the surface. Astrogator, what exactly are we looking for? The value of this planet. For now, it may seem like the pinnacle of nonsense. 
I assure you the Regis III is not without worth. With all due respect, Astrogator, I have the impression you're not telling us everything. As always, Dr. Koval, your instincts are correct. Please forgive my reticence. My goal was to maintain unimpeded research neutrality. There is indeed a very important factor of interest in this planet. The Alliance. The Alliance? The Alliance? Correct. What do they have to do with it? Well, they've sent their most powerful unit here. But to our best knowledge, Condor's traversing a distant quadrant. Well, I'm not talking about the Condor. So, the Invincible? Good guess, Doctor. A steel behemoth with the power to produce billions of kilowatts in a split second, converting it into energy fields that no material body can penetrate, concentrating it into destructive rays as hot as stars that can reduce a mountain range to dust or evaporate an ocean, together with its crew of almost a hundred men, professionals that are neither better nor worse than us. Well, I dare to say we're better trained, Astrogator. They are, however, unquestionable masters of propaganda. I know that some accomplishments they brag about are very much far-fetched, but the capabilities of the Invincible are not subject to doubt. And we as the scientific body should sever ourselves from the emotional and symbolic facade. In other words, we cannot ignore facts just because we don't like them, Mr. Coven. All right, but where do we stand in all this, together with our, may I say, not quite as numerous staff? Despite our modest forces, we still have a chance to gain a critical advantage over the Alliance, while avoiding confrontation. Okay, uh, and how would we do that? Simple. We leave this planet before the Invincible arrives here. Which is when, exactly? Well, they're still far away. <sighs> Astrogator, please, how much time do we have to conduct safe research? Thirteen days. There's no time to lose, then. I appreciate your eagerness, Koval. Dr. Crowther, do we need full gear? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Also, I caution you against taking off your helmets for a prolonged duration. This amount of methane is not neutral. Breathing the local atmosphere will lead to saturation drop. And you may start showing symptoms of mild brain damage, feel stupefied. But uh, don't worry, not before an hour or even a couple of hours. I see. Dr. Gorski, will you program Arty to collect samples? Of course. Marit, Krauto, please prepare for the surface. Koval, you too. You're leaving early in the morning. And what about me? You're staying on board, Doctor. But Astrogator... Uh, this is not up for debate. I need you here. As you well know, there's not much work to do for a biologist on Regis III, if any. So... Well, if I was ordered to stay, what the hell am I doing here? Yeah. Why am I on the planet? And the uh, atmosphere is breathable, barely. And if you do it for too long, you get brain damage. That's great. That's good to know. That might, uh, that might be foreshadowing. We might find people with uh, no oxygen. And you only got a couple hours if you lose it. Hopefully I, uh, I can find oxygen at the camp. <laughs> oh, jeez. I only got... What? Oh, thank goodness. Not everyone's in the field. Okay, there's two markers. Okay. Yeah, let's see. You get movement. I'm, a f I'm getting nervous with that. This is Dr. Yasna reporting. Do you copy? I'm entering the campgrounds. Is anyone out there? Androbot. Androbot. Stop. Androbot, stop! What the...? Uh, I'm reporting a robot malfunction. Oh, we just no stop now. No response to voice commands. Cause unknown. Oh, uh, maybe if I... RT? Default position. I don't know what's wrong with you, buddy, but you clearly don't want to cooperate. Nope, not liking it. Look at this robot! This is definitely some 1960s robot-looking thing. Okay. 
There's no one else at this camp. Oh, excuse me, sir. We had two markers. Okay. Two markers, one in here. Okay, great. There's someone in this tent that's gonna freak me out. Oh, yep, definitely someone in the tent. Oh, he has his visor up. That's not good. Uh, Dr. Crowther. Why'd you pull your visor up? Didn't you hear me earlier? <sighs> Doctor. <sighs> Is everything all right? This is not look good. Doctor, please. Look at me. I report that I've located Dr. Crowther. He's in bad shape. I'm going to examine him now. Hello, anyone there? I repeat, Crowther is in a serious condition. Okay, vital stuff. At least it looks that way. Temperature normal. Pulse two. O2 saturation is fine. There's nothing physically wrong with the doctor. Except for, yeah, he's kind of lost it. His pupils respond properly. Look at my finger. No delay in reactions. Give radio. He has a radio. Excuse me. Yeah, let me use yours. Yasna, can you hear me? Astrogator. Finally. I've been listening to you for two hours now. My receiver is dead. No need to explain yourself, Doctor. I know everything. The transmitter was still working, so I heard your reports. You didn't have it easy. Wait, please. I need to reconnect. Oh, okay. We're, yeah, we're definitely gonna just steal his uh, radio. Testing one, two, three. Ah, copy you, Doctor. Loud and clear. Do I understand correctly that the Doctor's life is not in imminent danger? That's my initial diagnosis. Yes. Yet no response to verbal communication. None. Conclusions, Doctor. Both mental illness and serious bodily injury could contribute to this condition. However, he wasn't suffering from any disorders. There's nothing wrong with him physically. Epileptic seizure and chronic diseases can also be ruled out. So what? He's just fine? On the contrary. Something is very wrong with him and I can't figure out what. Which is even more worrying. I'll prepare the infirmary. But first things first, the land. We need to get you all on board. Couldn't we just evacuate him right away? If it were that easy, I would have sent the hopper long ago. Please look for the mission log. It should include crucial data about the crew's activities. We have three more people to find. And you still need to designate a place for the landing. Okay, three more people to find. They got three more. And I mean, obviously there's oxygen in here because his oxygen's fine. I took my uh, visor down or off. It's like living quarters, okay. Hello? A anyone else here? I found Dr. Crowther. That looks like the outside. Oh. If this it's not a mission log, but it will do. Dr. Crowther kept records. Meticulous as always. Initial analysis of the samples revealed nickel, iron, manganese, beryllium, and titanium in the composition. I would give a lot to understand what it actually is. Quick theory, a giant nickel iron meteor splashed into the atmosphere of Regis 3, melting its surface millions of years ago. No wait, scratch that. The shape of the structure contradicts it. What shape What's of, in there? Shape of what structure? Oh, oh we got some stuff here. So structure, they, they found a structure? Oh, okay. 
This is definitely going to be great. Let's see a uh, potential landing place. The most important thing is probably the landing coordinates. BA2316. Loading. 360. Excellent. I'm uploading the data. Starting calibration. I mean, this? I'm not going to tell him about that. The structure. Hmm. Dr. Gorski has moved away from the research sector to the west. Ah, that's right. He followed those deposits of metal. Metal? That's why we have detectors. Correct. Mine died, but Crowter had one as well, didn't he? Like everyone in the crew, Doctor. Everyone has a, uh, a thing here. Okay. Uh, I don't know what that means. It looks like Latin. I don't know how to read Latin. So they found a structure. And they also found a landing site. Ooh, this is our camp right here. Okay, so the structure is north. I mean, I'm assuming everything up is north, but I don't know. Are you looking for the detector? Yeah, just a sec. I got a working one this time. Or hopefully it. it's working. Please make sure it works. Oh, it is. I don't understand why it wouldn't. It's a rather reliable piece of equipment. Like everything around that's already broken. Okay. Checked. I'm leaving the tent. Yep, we have a working metal detector. And she puts her visor down. Good. That was always the thing that got me like, dead space. Isaac would pull up his helmet and you're like, Dude, you're in the middle of, like, monsters and stuff. Never pull down your helmet. All right, now for the robot. It's unresponsive. Yes, I know. I'm currently trying to establish connection. Can I help somehow? You must look for the others, Doctor. I'll take care of this myself. Get the tin head back on its feet remotely. And secure Crowter. I have everything I need. Just... Is something wrong with the connection, sir? It's not working. I'm not sure why. There's a relay transmitter in the camp, so the signal should be strong enough. A relay? Huh. Yasna, what are you up to? One sec. You're gonna make them wait? No, I'm not leaving him here. If the Androbot isn't working properly, I can't just leave Crowter like this. He might hurt himself. Uh, fine. Proceed as you deem fit. We found a fish. Fascinating. Did you find anything, Doctor? Nice specimen. Oh, it's still alive. Ah, the fish Dr. Gorski caught. Do you remember? Yeah, I remember. Something. I remember. Oh, flashback. Oh, Jesus. Flashback. Dragonfly, come in. Uh, hello, Regis. Dragonfly here. Dr. Yasna at the radio. And nothing? Is his leg still bothering him? Yes. He's been resting in his quarters. We're setting up on the shoreline. It's late, but we still have time to examine the ocean floor. Uh, Gorski is preparing the probe for launch. We'll start research soon. Oh, um, one more thing, Yasna. Yes? It's beautiful here. The ocean, <laughs> wind, sand. My suit is pinching and cramping just at the mere sight. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Should I include this in my report? Yeah. I'm serious. I don't know about you, but over the years I've learned to hate the void. We do everything to go further, see more, take mankind one step closer to omnipotence, and then we can't even take a walk on land. As if enjoying everything that's around us was almost a... I understand how you feel, Koval. After all these years, I miss home too. Is it that obvious? I come across as... Well, paradise, but at the end of the day, it's simple bombing that speaks through me. Well, a little obvious. We have to examine the composition of the ocean, but the... Collect the mineral samples. Yes. Koval, that's right. where are you Do going? Right, to be Over. Badly. For a little, um, uh, uh, quick wreck. Probe in the water. I'm switching to manual. I'm going to take a look around. Take a look around? No, you're Thanks smoking. Distance. Are you there? 100. Uh, a wrecky. More like a quick sicky. 300. <laughs> Am I hearing this correctly? Are you going to smoke, Papa? Uh, no, no, not at all. I'm staying dutifully at my station. 500. 
It's hard to speak of normality here, but animals are usually not afraid of equipment or, or anything they haven't seen before. Are you saying they've already seen probes? I've no idea, but their behavior suggests some sort of defense mechanism. I catch at least one for examination, then I'll be able to say more. Come here. Get that fish. One more time. Got it! What did you do? I had to electrocute him. Wouldn't have caught it otherwise. I'm taking the specimen ashore. That's a fine one. There'll be plenty to dissect, yes, no? <laughs> okay, so they got a fish. So we need to look for uh, a dish. Pretty sure I, I saw a dish earlier. A communication dish. Like that. Broken relay. I've got bad news. Our signal is far too weak to restart that Androbot. The relay malfunction? Not exactly. It's completely fried. I don't think a sandstorm could cause such damage. Well, that's irrelevant now, Doctor. There must be a spare somewhere in the camp. Please search for it. Spare relays. Check them there. Check them there. That's something. Okay. Yellow box, of course. They did make that a little obvious. Uh, no luck. Oh, okay. not in here. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> so I'm guessing. Hey, excuse me, Mr. Robot. Nope. Yes. Nope. Not here either. Artie, excuse me. Got you. I have the extra relay. Excellent. The signal should be back as soon as it's turned off. Oh, she's just taking all of them. Okay. Okay, so she took three. Just in case we need some more relays later on. And over here. Oh, look at that beautiful tinfoil relay. That's why it got destroyed. The storm came through and just wrecked that thing. It's made out of aluminum. I'm connected. What happened here? Is it going to work? We'll see. I rebooted the systems. That should help. Good, good. It's receiving instructions. Chamber robot? Oh, I don't know if the Androbot should already be doing something. Is it still frozen? Yes, unfortunately. Hmm. The positronic brain has correct readings. Receptors. Hmm. Okay, it's alive. It worked. He moved. Finally. Artie should be walking now. Does he? His positional data hasn't changed. He's trying. <laughs> well, you can see that he really wants to go, but still can't. Oh, please check his legs. Hmm. Could be the server motor. Ah, that's it. Got you, tin bastard. Ah. Thank you, Doctor. I won't hold you any longer. Go find the others while I finish here. That's an order. Yes, sir. All right. Well, I'm guessing that is good. He's not moving, though. 
He's having some problems still. All right, map. Find the rest of the crew. All right, red dot is me. Excavation site. That. Yeah. This. Now, they're saying this is the map, and I don't think we have all these regions, but maybe. So yeah, we kind of went through these three, and now we're up here. But I'm guessing we're going to go over here to the square for a landing site. Alright guys, well hopefully you guys liked the first episode of The Invincible. If you did, hit that like button, and I will see you guys in the next episode.